It's your boy Boss Mac back to gaming.com and in today's video we're going to be checking out the Galax RTX 3070 SG. So Galax sent us their RTX 3070 SG. Some of you who have read my launch day reviews of the RTX 3070 would know that it's quite a tight race, especially when you look at the numbers side by side for performance. So ultimately the choice is boils down to either aesthetics, cooling, price, and availability, which brings me back to the RTX 3070 SG. Here in the Philippines, I think it's one of the more prolific models for Galax. So just in case you're in the situation where, where you're looking for an RTX 3070 and you spot the RTX 3070 SG from Galax, in this video, I'll talk about how this card performs and share with you my thoughts if you should buy this card or not. I'll also talk about the technologies, emphasis on plural, that NVIDIA has built their gaming ecosystem on. Ray tracing acceleration, DLSS, Reflex are some of the things I wanted to touch on because I think these technologies get dismissed as plain features but they really serve a bigger purpose for the NVIDIA gaming ecosystem. But first let's talk about the Galaxy RTX 3070 SG. I usually like my card if it has a story but Galaxy has a rich library of sub-series for their cards. There's really a lot to talk about but this one doesn't really have a backstory. But anyways, let's look at the Galaxy RTX 3070 SG and its cooling solution. It is a dual slot cooler featuring triple 92mm fans. The cooling is fairly light but thanks to the overall length of the card, it does help spread out the heat. Galaxy uses 92mm as I mentioned on the RTX 3070 SG. These are clear and they do have RGB lighting and they do have a fan stop mode where it really doesn't spin if you're not really using the card like uh, just uh, hanging out the desktop. As a Galax card, the RTX 3070 SG supports one-click overclocking through Galax's Extreme Tuner software. Just download the software or app and you can boost performance with one click just like the name implies. So let's get to it. First up, the specs of this card. The RTX 3070 SG has a base clock of 1500 MHz and has a boost frequency of 1725 MHz. Given how GPU boost performs and how easy the Ampere cards are to cool, it's not uncommon to see this card hover upwards of 1800 MHz, which we'll confirm once we start testing. You can find out more about our test bench and methodology in our full review article. The link is down at the description. Starting off with our thermal behavior check, we fire Final Fantasy 15, which is my gaming stress test of choice. Average temperature during the test is 63 degrees Celsius and power draw is around 216 watts. Again, this is a typical gaming load. The fans do rev up during gaming and at 80% it is a noticeable whir, but nowhere close to a jet engine takeoff. Noise is a subjective matter, hence why I don't really do sound level testing. I believe in the sound of power and the Galaxy RTX 3070 SG is quite above acceptable for me. It's actually fairly quiet and a well shot case should really muffle the sound as well. All our performance charts will be in my full article review. I'll be showing you gameplay footage from the Galaxy RTX 3070 SG, checking the performance for 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. The next clips will be shown without commentary, so you can form your own conclusion. You can also skip ahead to the next segment.
You notice a lot of the games I cover are esports titles. Besides the genre defining titles, I maintain esports games in the benchmark list due to their longevity. For example, CSGO and Dota 2 are two of the most played games today with price money skyrocketing in size. Nvidia is spearheading a lot of technology like Reflex, Reflex Analyzer, G-Sync, and a lot of other things to improve responsiveness in games. Nvidia's Frames Wins Games campaign focuses on the esports sides of things. Their tech from someone who plays competitively is promising to say the least. On the more cinematic side of things is Ray Tracing, the foundation of the RTX family graphics card. We're now on the second generation of RTX cards and improvements are impressive. Now, between Ray Tracing and DLSS, I'm openly very vocal about my support for DLSS. Games like Monster Hunter World, which has a reputation of being slow like molasses during certain scenes, gets a decent boost with DLSS turned on. Now, that's Gen 1 DLSS. NVIDIA released DLSS 2.0 this year, and to test that out, what better game than Cyberpunk 2077? This game features the whole shebang, ray trace illumination, ray trace reflection, ray trace diffusion, and ray traced ambient occlusion. I'm actually still benchmarking this game, so be sure to follow us on Back to Gaming so you get updated with our Cyberpunk 2077 benchmarks in multiple updates. It's uh, still updating, so we're still doing a lot of benchmarks when things uh, improve on the CPU side. Anyway, here's a clip of Cyberpunk 2077 with ray tracing turned on. I'll show you the footage of DLSS on and off as well to show you just how useful DLSS is. Focus on the FPS camera.
About two years ago, we had two or so games with some form of ray tracing feature. Now that number has grown quite a bit. Cyberpunk 2077 is pretty much the hallmark right now, but games like Watch Dogs Legion, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, Fortnite, and even Minecraft has RDX support. So going back to our card. So the ray tracing footage I show you for Cyberpunk 2077, Minecraft, and Black's, uh, Black Ops Cold War were all footage played on the Galaxy RTX 3070 SG. The beauty of PC gaming is you can tweak the eye candy level to fit your needs. Which brings me to our conclusion. The Galaxy RTX 3070 SG is quite vanilla for a graphics card, but in a good way. It performs within expectation, it has decent cooling, and if you're in Southeast Asia, availability is pretty good. So be sure to check with your favorite dealers for price and availability. Again, the value of the Galaxy RTX 3070 SG lies mostly to how much an RTX 3070 fits your need. If you're coming up on RTX 2080 Ti or 2080 Super, it's not much uh, cost to celebrate. But for anyone who has spent the last four years or more saving up for, an, uh, for a next generation card and has held to this day an RTX, uh, excuse me, a GTX. 900 or a GTX 1050 Ti for this long, the RTX 3070 is definitely a great choice. So, performance differences between brands is not cut and dry, but for the Ampere cards, it will really fall down to value. For anyone looking for a more mainstream option, Galaxy is certainly up there. Their RTX 3070 SG is well made, has decent cooling. Also, I saved this part for last of the, uh, for the last part of the video, but the Galaxy RTX 3070 SG includes a GPU anti-sag bracket. I don't know, I just want to say that up. So it does li liven things up. In terms of negatives, all RTX 3070 are criticized for their VRAM size. Personally, I would recommend the RTX 3070 for 1440p gamers. It is just the right spot for that balance of cinematic and uh, more frames at that resolution. DLSS helps a lot in supporting games. Other than that, the clip-on fan, I feel, is uh, really gimmicky and it's, it's totally up to you if you want to use it or not. In closing, the Galaxy RTX 3070 SG is definitely a vanilla option for those looking for an RTX 3070. It's definitely nothing that screams uh, gamer, but the nice fusion of triple fan cooling and the RGB lighting will definitely be up to uh, some people's alley. It's definitely good value as long as you're not buying from scalpers and unreasonable sellers. The Galaxy RTX 3070 SG is definitely a good card. Not a lot to complain about, and if you need that little vote of confidence, then you have my blessing. Again, the full detailed review article is up on my website. It is backtogaming.com. And once again, this has been your boy Boss Mac back to gaming.com. If you want to see more videos like this one, don't forget to like the video, comment the video, and subscribe. And I will see you guys on the next one. Happy holidays and advance happy new year. Peace.